Welcome, HAEA friends, to this HAEA webinar brief, which will address HAE and the COVID-19 vaccinations. I'm Tony Castaldo. We're honored to have expert HA physician, scientist, and researcher, Dr. Mark Riddell with us today. Dr. Riddell is a professor of medicine at the University of California at San Diego. I could spend the next 10 minutes listing Dr. Riddell's extensive qualifications, but in the interest of time, I'll simply note that he is a globally recognized key HAE opinion leader and has authored a huge list of HAE related peer reviewed medical journal articles. Now, Dr. Riddell also serves as clinical director of the US HAEA Angioedema Center at the University of California at San Diego. Welcome, Dr. Riddell, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Tony. Happy to join you today. Now, Dr. Riddell, many in our community have asked questions about whether having HAE would exclude taking one of the COVID-19 vaccines. Now, excluding other health conditions for a moment and focusing only on HAE, is there anything in your expert scientific opinion and medical opinion known right now regarding the biology of HAE that would prevent a person with the condition from getting vaccinated? Well, Tony, it's a very important question, obviously, given the state of the pandemic and now the, the emergence of a couple of vaccines in the United States against COVID-19. Uh, and the, the, I'm glad to report that as, as of right now, there's no reason to think that these vaccines should, should specifically cause any problems related to hereditary angioedema. Um, these are RNA-based vaccines, um, and so there's nothing within the mechanism or the pathophysiology of HAE that suggests we need to be overly concerned about um, risks or adverse side effects uh, specifically related to hereditary angioedema. Now, I would say we, we all know with HAE that we have to be prepared, right? So um, I, I always want to reiterate to people, you know, know your management plan, know what you're going to do if you suffer any HAE symptoms. But again, there's absolutely no evidence right now that we need to be concerned about the vaccines causing problems specifically for HAE. I'm just kind of curious, Dr. Riddell, have you had any patients call and, and ask uh, your opinion? And, you know, what, what would be kind of the, the way you would approach it and kind of what, what words would you use to, uh, uh, you know, to consult specifically with, uh, with a patient who's on the phone with you? Yeah, well, certainly we're getting lots of questions about this. It's it's the topic of the of the week and the month, um, appropriately so. Uh, and so I, I have fielded this question a number of times in my patients uh, that I that I uh, take care of with hereditary angioedema. And you know, as with anything in medicine, this always comes down to the potential risks and the potential benefits of, of taking a course of action. Um, and so, as I mentioned, certainly vaccines have side effects and these vaccines also have a list of potential side effects, most of which are extremely manageable. Um, but as I mentioned, when we're talking about HAE, there's nothing specifically that we're more concerned about as a side effect with the vaccines. Uh, and so if we look at you know, the, the potential risks, which again, we can get into that a, a bit more in a moment, but the potential benefits, which are of course enormous when we have thousands of people dying from COVID across the country every day, I think generally my advice is that uh, the, the benefits here outweigh the risks in terms of getting vaccinated. Um, now, of course, every person's different and it's important to talk with your individual doctors and specialists about your situation because there may be unique issues. But generally speaking, that's, that's my viewpoint is that the potential benefits far outweigh any potential risks uh, at, the, at the current time. Well, that's great to know. So we can kind of put HAE aside as in and of itself being a risk factor. But you know, just like the general population out there, some of us who have HAE have other health conditions. I know this is a very general question, but you know, in your view, what, what would be the major other health issues uh, that might prevent someone uh, from being vaccinated? And, and what would you recommend uh, that anybody that has a concern, what would you recommend that, that they do? 
Well, the, I would say that there's a couple of categories to be aware of. One is that we, the studies that have looked at the, the COVID vaccines that have been authorized for use now, there are certain groups that are really not included very heavily in those studies. And that includes, for instance, women who are pregnant um, or children under the age of 18. There have been very few um, people under the age of 18. So we, we don't know for certain about the safety in those groups. And again, those are groups that I think it's really important to talk with your personal specialists and decide you know, about the risks and the benefits given that we don't have as much information. The, the other uh, issue relates to allergic reactions. And I'm sure people have seen this a lot in the news lately that there, while that wasn't an issue that showed up in the studies, there certainly have been a handful of cases now across the country and the world of people having serious allergic reactions to the vaccine. And so this is something that's, uh, as an allergist, has also come across our desk quite frequently in the last week or two. Should people with allergies, you know, be getting the vaccine? And at the moment, the, the CDC has recommended that really the only reason to take precautions with regard to that is if a person has had either known to be allergic to something in the vaccine, that would be a contraindication. Um, but of course, these ingredients in the vaccine are very unusual to be exposed to. So it's gonna be hard to know if someone's truly allergic to a specific ingredient. But also if people have had a serious anaphylactic or a serious life-threatening allergic reaction to another injected vaccine or medication. So these would be injections that people have had before. And in that case, it's important to take precautions. It doesn't mean you can't get the vaccine, but you need to discuss that carefully with your healthcare team and take the appropriate precautions. And that includes getting the vaccine in a place where they can treat an anaphylactic reaction and also observing a 30 minute observation period. And I wanna point out that while a lot has been made in the news of these serious allergic reactions, and, and they are serious, um, they can be life-threatening, all of those reactions that we're aware of were caught and appropriately treated within that 30 minute observation period, such that um, as far as we know, all of these people have recovered and are doing okay. And again, we all know that has nothing to do with hereditary angioedema. That's a totally different pathway. So that's why we feel fairly confident that that that's a separate issue and, and not a, a specific to HAE issue. Um, so I think those are the things to keep in mind. Um, the last thing I'd say, I get a lot of questions about people who have uh, immunodeficiency problems or, or on medicines um, that are immunosuppressive. Um, and it's true, we don't know for certain how effective the vaccine will be in that situation. We'll need more study data. But we think that there still are benefits, even if, if you have a, an immunodeficiency or an immunosuppressive um, condition. Uh, and, and there's not been any clear evidence that there's a greater risk of problems with those health conditions. So again, back to the old advice, talk to your own doctors, make sure you, they understand your, your health conditions and ask the right questions. Um, but generally speaking, outside of this issue of allergic reactions in very rare cases, um, I think the benefits of immunization are, are strongly outweighing the risks. And again, we have to keep it in perspective. We're losing thousands of Americans to COVID daily right now. And this vaccine is one of our few chances to, to fight back and get out of the pandemic. Well, great, Dr. Riddell. Thank you so much for your expertise. Uh, I think you've given us a lot of comfort in terms of uh, now we really know that there's no basis for an HA patient just because of that particular condition not to take the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And as an allergist, you've been able to give us, a, I think, a wonderful overview you know, of the other types of issues that could be involved. And the advices are also well taken with regard to anybody with concerns consulting with their physicians. So Dr. Riddell, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for your expertise. And We'll see you all next time on the next HAEA webinar brief.